Hello and welcome to this episode of For Your Consideration. My name is Guy and today we answer that question of should you be a GM? Well, I think everybody should be a GM. That's a bald-faced lie. I don't think everybody should be a GM. I think that GMs are not a rare breed. I think that everyone has the capacity to be a GM. But I think that there are certain assets, certain fundamental human qualities that one needs in order to be a good GM. And ultimately, if you're a bad GM, you might have some players for a while, but I don't see it lasting. I don't see it carrying on for long. I, I really don't see that happening, personally. Maybe it will, maybe I'm completely wrong, and I hope so. But if you want to be a GM, I have suggestions. These three different little topics. At, if you can tick them off, then maybe you should consider being a GM. Like I said, I think everyone has the capacity for it. I think there's just some qualities that you need to have and embody that will just make sure that you enjoy it and that your players enjoy it as well. So the mindset, your mindset, you need to want to explore. You need to enjoy exploring. You need to want to see a map and go, I want to, I want my I want to take people on that map. I want to be a tour guide. I want to explore. I want my, I want, I want my ideas to, to, to flourish and to grow. You need to have the mindset of wanting to help others. I, I, my players have got stuck. I need to figure out how I can help them. I need to give them an NPC or a clue or an artifact. I need to help them. I need to drive them into a certain direction. You want to help other people to have fun. So your mindset needs to be collaborative. You also need to want to let others win. Now that's a tricky one and I see it very often where the GM gets upset because their monsters keep dying. I was a GM like that. I hated my mom. You are there to lose. Every NPC you play is there to die at the hands of the player's characters. All your monsters, all your traps, all your cunning is there to be broken by others. You have to learn to enjoy that. You have to like it. You have to enjoy setting up a riddle that you know they would never get right, so you're going to give them help to solve it. You're going to beat yourself. So in other words, design a weapon, give it to your players, and then show them where to hit you with it so that you will die as quickly as possible. That's what you've got to enjoy. It's a very strange mindset until you turn it around and you realize that it is not about letting others win. It is about telling a narrative story with others. And in that story, you are representing the evil side, the side that is going to become, that is going to get overcome, that is going to get defeated. And you are actually supporting and rooting and trying to help, but also trying to prevent, but help a group of people move through that space. It's a very difficult space to be in. And if you enjoy winning, it can be a very difficult difficult sensation to let your monsters die and to purposefully set up situations that you are defeated in. I love it when I'm playing a betraying character and the players at the table start accusing me. You are a betrayer. You are an evil character. You, I've caught you out in your lie, you worm. I love sitting there feeling this this, this personal attack on me being a traitor and a liar and being able to be smarmy about it and then watch as my traitor gets executed by the players. You've got to learn to love it. You've got to learn to like it. Your mindset has got to be there. If it isn't there, you're going to struggle. Personally, you need to be a storyteller. Now, I'm not a good storyteller outside of a structured environment. If you ask me a question that would have a few sentence answers, I will talk to you for an hour as I ramble and waffle and explore and go in different directions and get your opinion on what I'm saying. It, it, by storyteller, I mean you need to enjoy telling a narrative. Now, an exercise I do with my partner is that we might be walking somewhere and 
there's a question that comes up. He says to me, um, did you pay the electricity today? And I'll go, ah, oh, no, I didn't because I was hijacked by ninjas. And he'll say, I, what do you mean ninjas? So I said, yes, I was walking and these ninjas, they leapt out of this van and they hijacked me. Uh, they took me to downtown Tokyo where they then served me sushi, which, you know, I don't eat sushi. So um, I actually allowed some of the sushi to escape. And in doing so, caught a ride with them out of the harbor, escaping the ninjas. In other words, you need to like telling stories. If you don't like telling stories, if you don't like making things up as you go, that's a problem. That becomes a challenge. That's what your entire focus is as a game master, is to tell a story, is to link narratives together. The players are creating the story. You've got the plot. They are now interacting. You've got to link them together. And that means you also need to be a problem solver. You don't have to be an accurate or correct solver of problems. You just need to be able to solve problems, to link things together. The characters have gone down this tunnel, which you know is going to lead to their certain death because of what has been set up. Figure out a way of how to prevent that from happening. If you like to keep your party alive. The characters have said something stupid to the king. Normally they'd be executed. Figure out a way as to avoid them being executed, but to get them back on track into your adventure. So you need to be able to balance out and think on your feet, this is happening, so I need to do that. This is happening, so I need to do that. There's nothing worse than a game master who sits back and lets the game unfold and doesn't interfere in terms of trying to solve the problems. Remember, you're there to help the players get through the scenario and to get through the adventure and to tell a good story. If you just sit back and you're not trying to solve anything, you're being very passive and sometimes that can lead to dead ends where players get very frustrated. They don't know what to do, they've got no options left and you're not helping them either. You also need to be a talker. Now, I know a lot of advice is that the GM should establish the scene and then shut up. Let the players continue talking. Absolutely. But you need to enjoy talking. You need to enjoy not necessarily the sound of your own voice, although that certainly helps. It's not arrogant to say, oh, I, I, I like the sound of my voice, actually. You need to enjoy your voice and enjoy talking and you don't have to do accents. You don't have to do accents. But you need to be able to create an emotional expression to convey or at least have a vocabulary to convey sadness or joy. You need to enjoy articulating and speaking because when you do speak, you are setting the entire tone for the whole table. You are setting the mood. You're setting the tone. You are embodying all of these different NPCs. You are bringing that world to life. So if you don't have the capacity, if you don't like talking, you're not going to bring that world to life and the players are going to feel very, very, very put upon. They are having to do all of this work. So if you don't like talking, being a GM is not for you. Then you need to have passion. And that passion needs to be openness. You need to be open to ideas because remember, all of your ideas, everything you're coming up with is there to be broken by the players. It's there to be defeated, to be overcome by the players. So if they go in a completely different direction to all of your plans, they are still doing exactly what we expect them to do. They are overcoming your plans. So you need to be open to that idea. You need to be open to the fact that they're going to do stuff that's completely crazy, completely unintentional, completely ludicrous. But you need to be open to that sort of thing. If you can't be, if you, if you are so blinkered that, no, they must stick to plan, and if they don't stick to plan, I just kill them. I don't think you're going to enjoy being a GM. I think you're going to be frustrated frequently because players go off in different directions all the time. It's what they do. You need to have dedication. And that dedication is reading the rule books, understanding the rules. You don't have to be a rules lawyer. You don't have to apply the rules 100% correctly from day one. But you need to be dedicated to that idea. You need to be dedicated to the story, to the adventures, to working out these problems, to talking to your players. That's what you need to, to have. You need to be dedicated. Make some maps. Come up with some stuff. Work on areas that you're poor on. Embellish areas that you're good on. Drive forward this, this narrative story. You need to be dedicated. And then you need to seek improvement. 
I'm constantly trying to figure out how to be better at, how to do more of, how to expand my capacity as a game master. Some I get feedback from players. Oh, what did you like about this? What didn't you like about that? Is this going in the right direction? Is that is, is too much of that? Too little of that? I'm now doing a lot more role playing. So as a player, I'm get. Was I too overbearing? Was I not overbearing enough? Did I do this? Did I do that? Did you get this type of character? Did, was it annoying? Was it this? So you constantly have to crave improvement. And that in a nutshell, is what I think sandbox style gemming is all about. I put the wrong slide in, my apologies. That is what I think you need in order to be a good GM, is you need that mindset to be correct. You need that personal space, that personal drive, those personal abilities, and you need the passion. And if you've got that, if you've got those three things, even in a small amount, you are going to be a great GM. And if you see it in others, if you see that there are others that have got that capacity, but they're not sure, oh, I don't know, it's so much work, support them, help them, sit through some adventures with them, give them accurate and honest feedback, point out areas that were strong, point out areas that were weak, but encourage them to continue, encourage them to carry on. That's what kept me going. That's what kept me GMing was I was encouraged to continue by my players. Even though I made all sorts of horrific mistakes, I wasn't open to ideas, I was a railroader, I didn't like my characters, my monsters, my people being defeated, so I always tried to outfox my players. My players stayed dedicated to me, and they pointed it out. Well, you did it again. Your evil villain somehow managed to outfox us once again. We are not enjoying your sessions because... You're not flexible. You're not open, You, etc., etc. You don't give us enough descriptions. Your descriptions are so lacking. That's what encouraged me to go out there and say, how do I give better descriptions? How do I give more information or not enough or too much? Or You've got to have that. So that all boils down to having passion for it. Anyway, I hope that this video has encouraged you perhaps to look at it and say, well, I actually kind of do have those. I've got some of those. You can get some of those. You can develop your ability to talk. You absolutely can. You can develop the openness mindset, the flexibility mindset. You can develop the desire to want to help others. You can overcome your desire to win all the time. You can overcome that. You can develop these things. So if these are things that apply to you, become a GM. And the reason why I'm so passionate about people becoming game masters is because we've got far more players. We know this. We've got far more players than we have GMs. So to have good GMs, passionate, mindset, personal-based, passionate GMs means we'll have more games, we'll have more opportunities to bring more people into our wonderful hobby, and that just drives it further. That allows us to explore things that we've never thought of exploring before. It adds to our collective knowledge and psyche and gives us a much more interesting future than if we stay stagnant. So if you think you can become a GM, I challenge you now, become a GM. Leave comments below saying, I am going to become a GM. And then give us feedback. Let us know how it goes. Come back to this channel, ask questions. Well, I did my first session and it was a disaster. Everyone was bored. What did I do wrong? Yes, yes, yes. Bring that to the channel. Let's discuss it. Let's unpack it. Let's look at it. Let's try and help you to become the great game master that I know that all of you can become. Anyway, enough from me. Go and have a weekend. <laughs>